Hello guys, uh, welcome back. My name is Vishal. In this video, let's explore the array mesh. Array mesh is generally used to duplicate the objects. You can make several copies of that objects. Not only that, you can transform like offset, scale, rotate and pivot etc. And you can do that in the several stages where this model becomes more uh, powerful and uh, this gives you the complicated results in an easier way. So let's get started with the video. So let's explore the array mesh in the ZBrush. So I've got this model, which is a selected sub tool. Once you have got the selected sub tool, you can go to the tool menu and open the array mesh. And we have uh, uh, array mesh presets, which can be referred from the light box. And we can also open them from the open menu, which are the same thing, the presets for the selected model. I would like to just uh, start from the scratch. For that, I'm going to enable the array mesh button here and the object will be duplicated. and. Uh, in the process of duplication, it will be translated, rotated and scaled, which can give you a very possible uh, combination of objects, uh, which can generally make your life easier in terms of complex uh, arrangement. So uh, first, when I've enabled the array mesh, uh, the very simple thing to explore is the repeat option. I'm going to take a value of 10 here or maybe a value of 5, which could be very simple. And then we have uh, uh, offset value, which is X, Y and Z. So I'm going to put a value of 10 in the X. So you should be able to see. There are total five objects which are, you know, copied here. Uh, I mean, the, the object is duplicated five times and uh, that's because the repeat value is five. I can generally increase this uh, into a more big number. Okay. And uh, if you could able to see, we have uh, the Y amount also where I could generally put a value of uh, 10 in the Y axis. And uh, very similarly, we can put that in the Z axis too. Okay. So let's have a look on the scale option, very similar to what we have in the offset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a X value of 10 here in the offset amount and then put a copies of 10 or maybe less number so that I could able to see the gaps here. Then I'll switch to the scale here and in the Y axis, I'm going to put a value of 2. I should be able to see there's a gradual increase in the height. Maybe if I go for the 5, you could see that clear difference. And why is this object looking small here and then long there? If I just open up this graph here, this graph is getting control. I mean, this point is uh, here and that point is here so i'm going to select this point here and then grab it like that and you should be able to see this all objects are scaled to five units which was there earlier i can just uh, grab the other point and then make it the opposite way also i can also uh, you know move in and out and then make the uh, size of these objects uh, looking different so i'm using the reset button and then put back the scale value to the one now the same thing is really happening with the offset but here it's slightly different so when the line is uh, this way, I mean, when the graph is this way, there's a uniform spacing between these two objects. However, when I alter this, uh, it is very much like your animation slow in and slow out. So it's giving me a slow out effect, which is nothing but the object which is immediately duplicated is very closer and gradually the distance is being increased because of this graph. So I'm, I'm just like controlling that way here. I can hit reset button and then go back to the normal. We also have the rotation option. So I can choose a value of 360 here when the object is rotated 360 degrees. Um, I'll just put the value of uh, X to zero and then start, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the offset is not uh, relevant in this case. So I'm rotating it uh, 360 degrees in the Y axis, sorry, in the Z axis. And then I choose the profile, uh, so the pivot and then change the Y uh, pivot. And you should be able to see that I'm uh, moving the pivot point of that object to somewhere here and the object is rotated around that. I can increase more number of copies there and then I can get something like this. It can be useful in making something more ornamental. Okay. So if I just hit reset button, everything will go back to the normal. Okay. Uh, we have a option called transpose where I can select the transpose button and I can start repeat. I mean, duplicating this object for that. I need to select the move tool or scale tool or the rotate tool and then switch off this gizmo 3D and then you should be able to see you got this manipulator in the x-axis there are uh, two options here one is a repeat and another one is a stage so i would like to put the repeat value uh, to maybe a 10 just i'm clicking and sliding those numbers and then hold shift and then se select the center circle and drag it okay like that i should be able to see i'm able to position those objects just by dragging those way so i would preferably use the center one the first one the last one i don't use it uh, for the translation purpose However, you could able to see the scale is getting affected and here the first one is uh, look, uh, you know, changing the location of that manipulator. The yellow circle, what you're seeing is the pivot. It's uh, very hard to translate, but you should able to see 
that's the pivot point i'll show you the other way to you know translate it now if i select uh, the offset value here you could see that is altered here with the same transpose tool uh, i could also select the rotation tool and select the center one and then click and drag and you should be able to see that's making up a copy there okay and then i can select that point and drag it and i should be able to see the pivot is making a difference there okay so the pivot point is altered with the same uh, setting there so i'll be selecting the reset button and that resets the whole thing uh, i will use the move tool and then increase the copies first and then i'm going to uh, you know put the scale tool and then scale it you will not see anything great here unless i move it first and then select the scale tool and then drag it which uh, actually scales up this model however when i'm doing this all of you know uh, duplicates uh, you might be getting so many ideas on how to model things here so that's what uh, the whole error mesh is about so you got the transpose tool which can be an interactive way of handling this array mesh or the values what you are seeing here in the below so let's have a look on lock position and lock size options here so i'll be doing the repeats here to 10 and then choose the rotation z to 360 and then pivot of the y maybe to 5 and you should be able to see i've got this uh, nice placement of this cube in the radial symmetry side now let's say if i'm uh, moving this object uh, this object is sort of uh, moving individually keeping its pivot point locked at this point and then when i'm moving it out i'm getting that radial thing going you know i mean the radius of the wheel is going way up and you could see that when i move it inside it's doing this way so i'll just uh, put uh, the reset uh, repeat value to 10 back and then and switch off the lock position and then move it i should be able to see the wheel size is not becoming big because of the translation because the pivot point is no more log now it is moving as one individual piece of object there and uh, we also have the local size uh, when i'm switching on the local size and i'm scaling it every cube is scaled individually there you should be able to see i'm making it small or making it big when i do the lock size feature off okay firstly i think the scale i'll reset back and then i will also do some pivot related uh, changes so that i can check with the size now i should be able to see the total uh, radial symmetry is uh, scaled as one piece of object when i switch this on it's scaled as individual cube that's a whole difference between this lock position and lock size feature we have a switch xy switch xz switch yz uh, options here uh, the the options are very simple the value of x will switch to the y and value of y will be switched to the x if i hit this button let's have a look on uh, these options here so you should be able to see the pivot value y is 5 and x is 0 but when i hit this button uh, you should see the x has taken the 5 and uh, the y has taken the 0 which has been swapping these two effects rotation uh, there's no uh, difference because x switching is happening between x and y only okay uh, but if i just choose uh, switch x z then you should be able to see the z rotation is now passed on to the uh, x uh, x channel very similarly y z the z will go to the y and y will come to the z and so on so it's very simple uh, set of options we have just to swap the values so let's have a look on the append new insert and the transform stages so uh, i've not duplicated anything at this point of time on this model so i'll go to the repeats here and put a value of 30 for the repeats and in the rotation z i'm going to put a value of 360 and in the pivot in the y i'm going to put a value of 5 which gives me the same radial symmetry here so i'm going to put append new option here which will add a new stage uh, for the existing one so there are two stages right now then the second stage i'll be repeating this five times and i'm going to choose the offset and then put a value of five where the object is going to be duplicated uh, and then i mean the circular the radial symmetry what we had that has been made five times because the repeat value is five and also i've used the offset value of five okay now this is stage number two so if i just put uh, one more time append this is going to add stage number three so, so i'm going to put a repeat value of two and in the offset z i'm going to drag this and then it, it adds that wheel there okay so there are three levels of duplications happening here that's what this uh, stages are about the stages can also be checked when the uh, transpose button here and also uh, switch to the gizmo mode and you should be able to see there is a slider called stage i can swap to any of the stages there so i'll be doing that from here uh, first i'll switch off the transpose and then what i'm going to do is i'll just slide this to my first stage 
the other stages are like a grid pattern right now so i'll put the stage number two which is now second uh, level of duplicates is visible and the rest of them are uh, like grid now this is the third level now let's say if i have to um, um, add a, a stage which should be in between something so right now i'm in the stage number two which has got repeat five and uh, offset five so it is in the two so let me hit insert now now you should be able to see the stage three is now i mean whatever stage two was there that became stage three now you have created a new stage called stage two okay now let's say i've i want to make a copy of this circular grid okay uh repeat set two then i'm going to choose the offset value of two there okay and then i'm going to select the scale value of 0 0.8 0 0.8 0 0.8 and you should be able to see one level is smaller another level is bigger so i just made that sort of you know copies which is added in between what was there uh, i can select any particular uh, stage and i can just uh, delete that and that stage will be gone there okay so you can delete the stages here like that right now i have uh, two stages of uh, array mesh here if you could able to see i've got this cube and i did a radial symmetry here in the first stage and in the second stage that circle has been duplicated as a second ring if you could able to see that's the first stage and this is the second stage let's say if i copy this one okay the second stage which is uh, you know offsetting that uh, on the left side so i just uh, did a copy of that then i'm creating a new stage which is stage number three and there i'll paste it so that the offset has been applied to that like what we have the offset applied in the previous stage so you can copy the settings of one stage to the other stage using the copy and paste however i can just delete that particular stage and uh, also i can reset the overall values what we have here right now in the second stage instead of uh, two repeats i have uh, uh, i have placed uh, around six repeats here and you should be able to see there is an option called chain so what is that actually doing is the first object has been you know uh, created with uh, the radial symmetry and then the second stage if uh, you could see there is an option called chain if that option is uh, you know off the total circle what you're seeing right now has been copied six times if not when i press the chain button you should see that this is copied only the box has been copied uh, into the six times i mean it's not taking the instances which were duplicated in the stage number one that's uh, the stairs uh, chain is all about and you could able to see there's a uh, option called uh, smooth which gives a, a smooth transition between the stage number one uh, to stage number two which is basically greatly useful when it comes to you know blend those shapes and create a complicated duplicate patterns there so let's have a look on some of the options here which are related to the alignment and all that stuff so i've created an arrow model here and i'm going to repeat it around maybe a 50 times okay and then i go to the rotation z uh, and then put a value of 360 degrees and then in the pivot i'll put a y value of 10 so that uh, y value of 10 is too big so i'll put it a 3 and also i'll go to the offset and then put the z value here so you should be able to see i've created a spiral pattern here with arrows so the arrows uh, alignment uh, the orientation is uh, based on what it was on how it was placed initially so when i say align to path okay uh, so this uh, duplication has generally created a a, a cur curvature okay a, a path basically so this curvature what you're seeing here uh, i mean the model is you know either perpendicular to the tangent of that curvature or parallel to that so i can generally align the y axis uh, to the path which is like um, all paper cups stacked um, something like that or you could able to see i can uh, align that with the x axis or with the z axis so this is uh, the align to path option when we enable that uh, the align to y axis uh, makes all the objects to align with the axis and uh, you can also choose the x y z here very similar to that uh, we have uh, some interesting control over uh, the result so we have a uh, pattern start option so pa pattern start option is like uh, when i put a value of nine from the starting after nine points the result start showing up in the pattern so if i just let's say put a value of two you should be able to see the second point is where the starting is happening so if i put a five the fifth is the starting point so that is uh, the pattern start and uh, if you put the length so you are controlling how long this pattern should be uh, that can be controlled okay 
so i'll put it uh, full there now we have pattern on one let's say if i put a value of three so and pattern on off i'm going to put a value of two here so you should be able to see every three arrows there is a gap here okay how much gap is that the gap is basically uh, the steps like let me put that here so when i put a pattern value of one pattern value of two pattern value of three so you should be able to see there's a gap here so how many units of gap you are controlling with the pattern off option so this is like when you want to break the pattern i mean when you are getting the result continuously and uh, th there's no you know interest uh, uh, interesting shape created there this should be a greater help okay so i'll put them back to the default let's check some error options here so i've got this face model i'm going to uh, put the array mesh there and you should be able to see it has been copied in a linear way and we have a mirror option here the reason i have made this uh, detail is just to check uh, because this is a symmetrical model so i, I put the mirror x you should be able to see uh, the detail what was there on the right side has come out to the left side in the copies there and uh, that's the reason i have put the mirror actually if it was symmetrical you should have you would have never seen that uh, change here and uh, you have mirror y which is making the result uh, coming opposite to the original model and then we have mirror z which is uh, you could again see the front and back are mirrored here so we have this uh, model uh, with the array mesh. I'll put a value of uh, 50 there for the repeats. And I will also go to the rotation Z and then put a value of 360. And then offset Y, I'll just uh, move it down. And you should be able to see you got this kind of uh, strange result there. I also change the pivot point here. And um, offset value of 1 should be very fine there. Okay, so you should be able to see I've got something uh, crazy here. Uh, now, if I just go to the align Y option, I should be able to see from the path either in the negative or on the positive side the object is moving like uh, just like a line how it was orienting from the curvature uh, this model is moving away of uh, towards that particular path and uh, you can uh, explore that in the other axes also like you could see that i'm moving in the x-axis also so this gives you a little bit more extra level of control while you are doing uh, the transformations so we have some transformation related settings here as you could see right now i've got the offset which refers to the translation or moving of the object and we have x y and z translations and uh, you should be able to see uh, we have uh, the x uh, y and z handles here uh, which can help you when you enable the floor here so this uh, can be referred for the direction so right now i've put the x amount to one let's say if i put a value of 10 here one thing i should uh, carefully check let me put the value of two repeats here so there are two copies and then when i put a value of one or maybe two so there are two copies and i put the amount of two so the object is precisely offset one tile there let's say if i put a uh, 2.2 you got some uh, gap here so uh, that point one is the distance which i really wanted to maintain so if i put a value of 10 in the repeats that means 10 copies though i'll put here the amount of 11 which gives the same result so as i'm repeating this number here i should also repeat the amount to correctly place them okay it is like 10 copies then i need to move 10 units uh, from its original place so we also have uh, this uh, graph here this graph controls the acceleration and uh, deceleration of um, the spacing let's say if i just uh, hold this point and grab it you should be able to see the objects here are very close in comparison to this particular point however i can generally move it and give the same spacing like in animation we have slow in slow outs between the ghost so that's what you can really do with this particular graph there so we also have the scale so i'll just uh, choose the y scale to three units so what you're seeing is the first object is a uh, of one unit scale and the last object is three unit scale there and uh, if you could open the graph here and then just click and drag it there you should be able to see all the objects are scaled three times to the original size so i'll put the scale value back to the one just to reset them I'll go to the offset and also put the offset value to zero. Let me make a circular shape here. Uh, for that, I go to the rotation option and we have the Z amount and then put a value of 360. So every object is uh, rotated at an angle of, like uh, let's say if uh, I put a value of eight here, okay, the number of repeats, the first object will be rotated at zero degrees. The second is rotated at 45, 90, uh, 135, 180 and so on. So it's an increment of 45 because in 360, if I divided it uh, by four times, each object will get 90 degrees of uh, increment. If I do it with uh, eight pieces, then you get 45 degrees of in increment. So it's like 360 divided by eight is uh, what every object gets its orientation. So now uh, all the objects are placed at the same uh, you know, location. So what I'm going to do is I choose the pivot where I'm going to move the pivot of that transformation to some 
other place so i'll choose y where the y axis i'm going to move the pivot point down there so i'll just put the slider and then move it down and you should be able to see you got this nice uh, angle there so uh, when i put the pivot point of 5 it's like total 10 units of diameter and then from here it's like 5 and 5 units and then it's rotating with a 45 degree increments so i can increase the count to maybe 36 so every object is rotated at an angle of you know 10 degrees each so it's it's how simple it is so we have uh, um, this kind of controls i mean when you use a combination you get a crazy result let's say if i go to the offset and then choose the z amount and then you get the spring like pattern i can increase the count okay and also i can increase the rotation like uh, around 5000 degrees so you get that crazy amount uh, shape here so the reason you're getting these ribs is like every object has got that much gap i'll just reduce it for you to better understand okay so the the, the gap is increasing uh, i can play with the offset there and then you get that crazy shapes here okay so when when it comes to modeling complex things it will be of greater help so i just uh, put the offset value to zero and then put a value of uh, eight there and then go to the rotation to 360 and then keep it like that okay now if i uh, select this model i can do any modifications to this model so i select this particular uh, face and then choose insert okay and then just click and drag it there so i got a face and then just just tap it there you get the same result on the both sides now i'm going to select uh, this whole model press ctrl w and i select this particular face and then make a polygroup out of that face there okay so this will give a uh, two polygroup model here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, apply this option called nano mesh and I can, i'll also increase this count to maybe 15 so that i get uh, too many objects there okay so let me just uh, apply make mesh and you should be able to see the polygroups are now connected here okay it should be a two polygroup model now if you could able to see there's, there's a gap here and that can be uh, you know closed uh, with this close option and you got this result here so uh, i would say uh, this angle is uh, where the bridge is working on with the, uh, the settings so the angle can i mean it's like uh, if uh, the plane angle changes beyond this particular angle it may not work so sometimes when the there is a huge difference in, in the angle then uh, try to change to get your result activated so it's that of that sort so just once you make mesh it is converted into a model there so to uh, explore the array mesh you could just open the light box here and in lightbox so we have the array mesh folder and you can do some case studies here like you got an array building and you got an array test so just you need to open that up and then see what they have done to achieve this nice building model it's only one piece which was actually modeled later this model has been you know duplicated several times you could able to see there are six stages here so if i just zoom out and then uh, start deleting one by one stage now i'm deleting the stage number six so this overall set was copied and then we got stage number four i'm going to delete that let me just go back i've deleted a wrong stage so now this is the one particular set which has been copied uh, again there are uh, four uh, you know sides of this building so uh, here they used the chain feature if i don't use the chain feature let me delete this one and delete this one and uh, delete this one okay let's say if i append this stage and then use an offset value uh, I'll be choosing the offset of uh, Z here. Then you should be able to see this model has been copied, okay, with uh, the existing set. Now, when I enable the chain, it will be only copied with that. And then you repeat those uh, and then start, uh, you know, uh, doing one more copy, copy, and then that should be in the chain reaction. So the chain plays very important role uh, when it comes to making up this result. So you can also check um, this model, which is creating a tank trades. Uh, chain chain belt what we have uh, so again this is uh, having uh, stages so let's say if i go to the fifth stage i've deleted that uh, left side or right side of the tank now i've got four stage number four and uh, you could able to see the smooth uh, transitions are used here and um, uh, it's very important to uh, explore this kind of models where you could actually create this kind of complicated patterns uh, in a simple way so uh, these are some examples and as i told you can always check the presets here or open the file which is uh, there in the presets folder which is the same thing which are opening from the presets there okay